today we're going to be talking about conversational skills in school-aged children with ADHD. So what is ADHD, you might ask? Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder is a common mental disorder that affects adults and children. Symptoms include inattention, hyperactivity, and impulsivity. So what symptoms affect their conversational skills? Well, let's face it, all of them. Social communication is difficult for this population because oftentimes they're unable to pay attention, may display inappropriate impulsive actions, and present with energy that is not appropriate for the given social situation. Now let's take some time to talk about friendships. Because of the apparent conversational deficits, people with ADHD may experience difficulty making and maintaining friendships. Of the friendships they do maintain, it is commonly quite difficult for them to deepen the bonds that they have created. This is due to the fact that the ability to maintain a conversation is a foundational block in understanding and relating to others. Let's take time to think about this. Imagine that your friend is telling you a story that is important to them. While this person is telling their story, your mind begins to wander. Let's face it, we've all been there. You suddenly think about how a package you've ordered in the mail should be coming in today. You interject in the middle of your friend's story and exclaim, my package should be in the mail today. You're then met with a disappointed look and your friend replies by saying, you weren't paying attention to anything I just told you. This is something that happens to all of us, but when you're a part of the ADHD population, it happens much more frequently and essentially can put a strain on the closest of relationships. Social skills training. Social skills training is a type of behavioral therapy used to improve pragmatic skills. It is a collaboration of different practices that teach individual skills that are necessary to succeed in life, such as the ability to problem solve, appropriately communicate, self-manage, and make decisions. Social skills are important because they build the foundation for maintaining positive relationships, as well as keeping jobs and um, holding places in the community. To have a conversation, not only do you have to get someone's attention, but you also have to take turns speaking and listening. Let's see what happens in a conversation between Sam and Jonathan. Hey Jonathan, I got a puppy yesterday. His name is Max. He's a standard poodle and he's really cute. Oh, I have a dog too. His name's Cecil and we take him for walks and stuff. Yeah, his Oh, and Cecil? Yeah, he goes up to my bed to go to sleep. Yeah, and he... he... Oh, my, oh, my dog's really cool because he can like take him for walks and we run with him. People will only want to talk to you if you stop and listen to what they have to say too. If you don't, the friend will probably get frustrated and walk away. Let's see what Jonathan could have done differently to get a better outcome. Hey Jonathan, I got a dog yesterday. His name is Max and he's a standard poodle and he's really cute. Oh, I have a dog too. His name is Cecil. Yeah, that's cool. My dog, he can do like tricks. I take him outside and I play with him. I really want to tell Sam about my dog, but he really wants to tell me about his dog. We should probably take turns. Yeah, I taught him up and lay down. I taught him sit and lay down, and I taught him... So out of our eight articles, four specifically focus on social skills training. However, for the sake of time, we're going to use the one study that consisted of a randomized control clinical trial focused on determining the efficacy of social skills training in children with two subtypes of ADHD. Participants in this study included 120 children diagnosed with ADHD, inattentive, or combined type ADHD. There was 30 boys and 90 girls in this study, and they were all between the ages of 8 and 12. The participants were broken down into treatment and non-treatment groups, which took place over eight 90-minute sessions during consecutive weeks. Each week, the therapists in the group based intervention would follow a model of first introducing the skill and explaining when to use it, why it's important to use it, where in what type of uh, social settings it should be used in, and how to use it. 
Next, a group discussion would happen and the children in the group would participate in a challenge game <clears throat> just to make sure that they were still paying attention and to keep them focused and engaged in the presentation. Third, the leader or the therapist of the group would model the skill that was learned in that week's session. Next, the role playing using the newly learned social skill. So in this stage of the therapy, the children would gather into small groups and practice role playing using the conversation skill or pragmatic skill or self-managing skill that they learned in that week. And to finish off the group, they had free play for the last 15 minutes where participants would focus on implementing the skill during a more spontaneous social interaction. Play-based interventions are practices that are designed to improve socio-emotional, physical, language, and cognitive development through guided interactive play. Clinicians utilize modeling, verbal redirection, reinforcement, and indirect instruction to sustain and encourage play activities through play-based intervention. The goal of this intervention is for children to be able to explore, experiment, interact, and express themselves. Here we have a video that describes the benefits of play-based instruction. In this video, the narrator explains how to implement a specific play-based intervention known as Lego therapy. Findings revealed that children participating in the play intervention showed a significant decrease in play deficits, became less socially disruptive, and more socially connected with peers. Now I'm going to explain how to implement a specific play-based intervention called Lego therapy. To begin, each child learns a clear set of rules and Lego building skills. They are then introduced to the rest of the group and everyone in the group agrees upon a project that's achievable for everyone involved. Each child is assigned a role for the project and the group works together to build the project according to principles of play therapy. As my group and I gathered research for this assignment, we found various articles that focused on play-based intervention. One of the articles consisted of a study that was a randomized controlled clinical trial and focused on determining if social play skills of children with ADHD would improve using play-based intervention. The study consisted of 31 children with ADHD and 31 playmates who were typically developing. Each participant was between the ages of 5 and 11 years old. During intervention, clinic play sessions were utilized to model, instruct, and reinforce live play sessions between peers. Play sessions were also video recorded, so feedback could be provided. Through these sessions, the clinician was able to reinforce appropriate skills and model skills, such as problem solving, sharing, and negotiating. To complete this study, intervention home modules were utilized by parents to implement the use of strategies at home and continue to increase social skills. For the social skills training outcome measures during this article, the social skills rating system, which was created in 1990, served as the outcome measure. The social skills rating system consists of 34 items um, for the child or 38 items for the parent. In this case, uh, both were utilized during this study. Um, one the parent took and one the child took, and then at the end they did it again to compare the outcomes. And these questions related to cooperation, assertion, self-control, empathy, which was only in the child's um, social skills rating system, and responsibility, which is in the parent's version of the social skills rating system. The outcome measures for the play-based intervention article consisted of the test of playfulness, and it was utilized pre, post, and one month following the intervention to assess the children's play skills. Um, this test consists of 29 items, each rated on a four-point scale by observing, and the skills in the test that were being measured um, consisted of sharing, negotiating, supporting one another, initiating interactions, the time engaged interactions, responding to others and giving verbal and nonverbal cues, social skill when interacting with another, and the intensity of involvement with another. 
The overall conclusion that we found is the conversational skills of ADHD students can be understood as a lack of social skills. However, it is important to realize that there are more factors. The social skills training is a valid intervention strategy. However, when standing alone as a treatment, it is not effective in addressing the self-control and emotional regulation and other cognitive facets that also add to the pragmatic issues of this population. Um, the play-based intervention was found to be an effective strategy to improve the social skills of children with ADHD. So the one article mentioned the parent involvement to generalize the skills to the home environment from intervention was evident. It was also reported by the parents that the children developed friendships and their interactions deepened. And it was also found that the playmates would remember and apply the strategies during the play sessions to serve as a reminder for the children with ADHD. Thank you for joining our topic on conversational skills in students with ADHD. I hope you enjoyed the presentation and that you're leaving with a little extra knowledge.